While some video game franchises continue to release the same game over and over again, others never get the follow-up sequel that they deserve. Therefore, it's not often a game studio decides to call it a day on their main series and move on to other projects. However, this was the case in 2010 with the release of Halo Reach, which was the last Halo game developed by Bungie. This excellent first-person shooter game got positive reviews, earned critical acclaim, and holds a notable Metacritic score of 91 out of 100. The success of Halo Reach was that it took and combined the best parts from previous Halo titles. This meant that the core elements that Halo is known for could be refined and of high quality, including its excellent campaign and incredibly fun multiplayer. So let's take a look at how Halo Reach was the perfect send-off for a game franchise, but beware of spoilers for the game from here on out. The story of Halo Reach is unique in that it's a prequel to Halo Combat Evolved, so you know how it ends from the beginning. The game takes place on the colony planet of Reach during the war between humans and a group of alien races known as the Covenant. Your character joins as a new member of Noble Team, a group of Spartan super soldiers, as they investigate suspicious activity on the planet. Lieutenant. Commander, sir. I'm Card. Noble Team's leader. That's Kat, Noble 2, Neil and George 4 and 5. You're riding with me, Noble 6. They quickly uncover that the Covenant is amassing an army and planning an invasion of the major colony world. That part. Transmitting visual. You've seen this, Cat? As the game unfolds, you try to push back and attempt to repel the invading forces. However, as more of the Covenant fleet arrives, this quickly turns into a desperate attempt to evacuate civilians as you witness the fall of Reach first hand. One aspect that the game gets right is the pacing, with some levels that are slower to add tension and build the world. This is the case in the first mission Winter Contingency, where there is a gradual build-up to the reveal that the Covenant are on the planet. At the start of the level, there is no initial combat which allows players to learn about the planet and game world. You first investigate a distress beacon, then encounter civilians and wildlife, before witnessing the terrible fate of the missing soldiers. Looks like they were interrogated. It's messy. In contrast, other missions are instead action-heavy, such as the level Tip of the Spear. This opens with a cutscene of two large armies clashing, and you are then dropped right into the fight after your vehicle overturns and you pick up a grenade launcher. Could use some help. On my way. During the mission, there are also many cinematic shots to keep you engaged in the stakes. These include large frigate ships flying overhead, providing support from above, as well as cliffside views of the main battlefield in the distance. The game also has a balance to the different sections in levels, with some that take place in large open areas with vehicles and heavy weapons. Other segments then involve close quarters combat, such as when you infiltrate and take over an enemy ship. While the story missions of Halo Reach are linear, the game occasionally provides flexibility in how a level can progress. The most obvious example of this is during Sword Base, where you get two objectives with no wrong choice as to which you complete first. Good call. Let's get comms first. I agree. Go for the gun. There are also more subtle examples, which are typically optional objectives. One of the first you encounter is a Covenant Zealot class elite. They are stated to be a high value target where you are prompted to kill them before they can escape. During nightfall you encounter a group of rebels and if they survive to the end they give story exposition and provide you with weapons. You know this stuff is stolen. What, you gonna arrest me? No, I'm gonna steal it back. The road leads to a hydroelectric plant. We use the riverbed to smuggle rations, weapons. Basically anything the UNSC considers contraband. However, if you fail to save them, the game notes this and there is instead alternative dialogue that progresses the mission. Damn it, six. Recon Bravo to Noble 2. We lost the civilians. Should be a hydroelectric plant nearby. George said settlers dammed the nearby river. It was a few years back. Dry riverbed might be your best route. The later mission New Alexandria is also designed so that every playthrough is different, and it changes the order of the main objectives each time. The minor objectives you are given in between are even randomly selected from a pool of ten for variety. This is Gunnery Sergeant Buck from 11th ODST, over. Copy Gunnery Sergeant, go ahead. Need escort on a classified op. Send someone who knows how to fly a type formation. 
The overarching story between the game's missions is also implemented well, with no single level being a standout that pushes the plot forward. Instead, each is seamlessly pieced together, and it's only when you consider the start and the finish that you see the drastic progression. Towards the end of the game, Halo Reach's narrative then shifts towards huge revelations and set pieces which essentially act as fan service. Everything is also tied together nicely, with the last moments being the opening cutscene from the original game. Cortana, all I need to know is did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. The Halo franchise pioneered modern advancements to first-person shooter gameplay, and has been an inspiration for many other video games. With Halo Reach as the fifth game in the series, it meant that many fan-favourite weapons returned, but with a fresh update. From the human side, the powerful Magnum sidearm pistol would be nostalgic for those who played Halo Combat Evolve. Modified versions of the assault rifle and shotgun also return, along with the rocket launcher and Spartan laser for taking down stronger enemies. Many classic Covenant weapons also make it into the game, such as the plasma pistol and plasma rifle which are great for taking down enemy shields. The Needler also returns, along with a new long-range variant, which also detonates on multiple hits. In fact, many new changes were introduced to keep the classic Halo gameplay fresh and to better balance the weapon. For instance, the ability to dual-wield certain weapons was removed in favour of weapon variety. With this, new weapons were added such as the DMR, which became a standard choice for precision shots at mid-range distances. The explosives-based grenade launcher and target locator also better balanced the game against tougher enemies and vehicles. The Focus Rifle is also an underappreciated addition and is effectively a sniper rifle that does more damage the longer it hits. The Plasma Launcher is also new and can fire multiple plasma grenades that can track and stick to targets. This overhaul also saw ballistic based weapons being altered so that they hit their targets almost immediately to make them feel more punchy. Differently, the Covenant Plasma projectiles instead move slower and deal more damage to shields rather than to health. Some changes were additionally made to Halo Reach which were inspired by Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3 ODST. For instance, the player damage system saw the return of a health bar to the heads up display and the addition of health packs to the level. Another new addition for Halo Reach was armor ability, which refined the disposable equipment system from the previous games. Instead these recharge between uses and can allow for better movements such as sprint, evade and jetpack ability. An assassination based system was also added to the game, where holding down the melee button instantly kills an enemy in a third person animation. These are particularly satisfying when used along with stealth based armour abilities, such as the hologram and active camo. These new additions and changes allow the player to approach combat in many different ways. For example when dealing with hunters the player could get up close and personal, or just use explosives. Also for the anti-aircraft guns you can defeat the guards to shoot the reactor core, or you can just use enough firepower from a distance. Using certain abilities in combination with the wide range of weapon loadouts can particularly be devastating, especially on the harder difficulties. However, the main bonus is that players can try new things and get a different experience with each playthrough. Video games are usually better played with friends, and Halo Reach follows its previous titles with many game modes that give the player a variety of options to choose from. The campaign offers cooperative gameplay with up to 4 people online or 2 people locally using a split screen. Players that prefer working against AI bots can also play Firefight, where you face off against increasingly harder waves of Covenant forces. Halo Reach also made several improvements to its Forge mode that allows players to edit the multiplayer levels. This also meant the community could create and share new game variants and maps with several of the more popular entering into official playlists. However, player versus player is likely the most popular multiplayer choice and Halo Reach has the classic game modes that Halo is famous for. It included Slayer and Capture the Flag, but the game also introduced some new modes such as Stockpile and Invasion. The key to Halo's multiplayer is in its matchmaking system which was recently discussed following the release of Halo Infinite. The developers were mindful for Halo Reach that having perfectly balanced matchmaking did not always translate into fun games. To expand on this, the matchmaking system for competitive ranked gameplay is likely as you would expect. It would pair up players of similar skill levels to make these games as fair and as balanced as possible. However, for casual games, it was preferable to have a slight imbalance. This was so in some games players felt they performed well, whereas in others they would feel they need to try harder. 
The result was variety between the matches, and not every game would be stressful and incredibly close. Halo Reach was successful in taking everything learned from the previous games in the series and combining them into one game. Its emotionally impactful story will be remembered long after completion thanks to the exceptional world and audio design, as well as the brilliantly crafted gameplay. While the franchise continued beyond the game, Halo Reach captured the essence of a Halo game and was a perfect send-off to the franchise by the original developers. It didn't take long for Reach to fall. Our enemy was ruthless, efficient, but they weren't nearly fast enough. For you had already passed the torch. <laughs>